Thank you. Okay, okay, okay. Um, last talk of the day. I know everyone's tired. Um, so I'm, I'm going to try to make this as exciting and interesting as possible for you. Very high energy, high risk, high reward, okay? Um, and first of all, I want to I wanna give a shout out to uh, Nick. I don't know if you're in the room. Uh, Nick was originally supposed to speak tonight, but uh, because I wasn't, uh, I'm not going to be in Singapore uh, beyond Sunday, so uh, he, gave, he kindly gave up this spot. So I'm, going, I'm doing a favor back to him. Please uh, check out his t TDD talk uh, next meetup. Um, so I'm going to do this talk. This is a live coding talk, which is difficult given this. Um, um, I also was tempted to change the topic to uh, TypeScript be happier. Um, <laughs> Because I'm a TypeScript fan, but and I think there's some others as well. But uh, you know, we're we're gonna stick we're gonna stick to hook. And this is the write hooks from scratch talk. I've given this at JSConf uh, Asia already uh, over over the weekend. And Wei here actually has seen it multiple times. So I thought it'd be more interesting because I I don't have a standing mic or anything. Uh, if she takes over the live coding and I'll narrate to you, we're doing pair programming. <laughs> she has uh, so hands up for her for Wei. Okay, so very exciting. Um, very nervous. <laughs> this is completely unrehearsed, by the way. Um, but she's seen this talk. Oh, what is this? Uh, nope, you didn't see that. Okay, it's completely unrehearsed. But I'm basically just gonna uh, we're doing we're gonna do pair programming. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna clone hooks in JavaScript, raw JavaScript. So the first thing we're gonna do is clone use states. So we'll, we'll write the the first function, the use state function. What uh, and then use the function keyword. Um, <laughs> What does the function, what does use state take as an as a argument? We'll just call it initial value, like init val or something, right? P put a parenthesis and, and curly brackets. Um, all right, yeah, all right, curly braces. What does use state return? Anyone? Array of state and set state. Excellent, let's define them. Right, so so we want to have uh, we in in hooks we want to have this idea of stateful functions. So let's define an internal val, like an underscore val function, and uh, you should not use const because const doesn't let you reassign to them. That's ES6 tuition for you. Uh, it, it, let's initialize it to init val, and also let's set state to init val. So in the next line, let's set state equals init val. So this is probably wrong because it will never change from init val, but we'll, we'll fix that in, uh, in a future iteration. Um, set state is a function, so let's declare const set state equals new val. Yeah, yep, oh, yep, let, yep, okay. So set state, we can use an arrow, arrow function syntax. Uh, new val, it takes a new val, for example, right? And then, um, that's, uh, yep, and then, and then we'll assign that to our internal value. So underscore val. Um, Right, that's, that's the internal value, and then we'll, we'll assign the new val to that. Um, OK, I think there's some typos in there. New val and new val. <laughs> um, OK, is this big enough for everyone, by the way? Uh, I, hope, I, hope, I hope that is. Yeah, there's an extra e there. OK, so cool. Now we're actually, that's, that's, uh, that's the minimal use state clone. So actually, let's go use it at the bottom. Um, so in, uh, nope, no, let's just uh, exit, exit the function and um, go all the way to the bottom. Um, so we'll, we'll destructure something like let's let's say a counter. Let's have a count and set count variable. Um, she's doing an amazing job, by the way. Uh, let's uh, yeah initialize that to one. Um, let's console log the count. This is amazing. I don't even have to code anymore. Why right, can't we all have this? Uh, we'll set the count to two, and then we'll console log count again. You can copy it by doing the you know the shortcut for cop for uh, copying the line. No, I don't. Oh, okay, I'll, I'll teach you later. Um, okay, so, so over here we have like a REPL type environment. Let's uh, blow it up a little bit. Um, hopefully, that, hopefully that's, so right now we're only seeing one, right? One and one. We're logging uh, the count over here. We should be setting the internal value to two, but we're not doing, we're not quite doing that. Because, and basically that's just because when we destructure from here, count is set to one. It's one over here and it's also one here. There's no opportunity for it to update. So really what we need is to turn count into a, a setter function. Uh, Wei already knows how to do that because that was the first uh, comment she had to me when she was seeing this uh, slide uh, is underscore val, yep, okay. So now it's a setter function, we're logging out uh, state. So let's go to the bottom in the console log and turn those into function calls. And now we have stateful functions, right? One updates to two. So we have a, a minimal clone of hooks in Node. But that's unfortunately not the actual API of React, right? In React, you don't have getter functions. You just have the variable. You just use it, and it's just live. It's, it's the right value every single time. So in order to do 
uh, in order to get closer to the React API, we have, we're going to have to break the model a little bit. It's a, it's a big refactor, uh, but I'm going to guide Wei through it, and she's very bravely uh, helping, helping us. So the first thing is we're going to namespace use state inside a React uh, object, right? Do you know how to do that? <laughs> so we'll say const React equals an, uh, an immediately invoked function, right? So we'll put a function in there. So this is the module pattern. Um, if you look at bundler output, you'll see this. So we're going to cut that and paste that in there, in that, in that function. And then we're going to return, at the end of that function that we're immediately invoking, we're going to return an object that has a use state in there. Fantastic. Okay, so now at the bottom, in the usage uh, code, we can just say react.useState, um, and everything still works as normal. We've, all we've done is we've namespaced everything in the, in the module pattern. So that's the React uh, mini clone that we have over there. So what we've done to the use state clone over there, we can also do to the hook. Let's wrap that in a component. So we'll call function component. So we'll just name it component for, for some reason. Um, doesn't take anything. Uh, parenthesis, put the, put the hook in there. Do you know how to move it up? Uh, Vim, Vim person. <laughs> Um, so I think it's uh, alt and up. Alt and up. Hold alt. Alt. Yeah. Oh. Ah, yeah. There you go. Okay. Let me let me minimize it a little bit. Okay. So, so cool. Um, we normally would be rendering to the DOM, but we don't have the DOM here. We just have a repo. Um, so we're just going to return an object. Um, and in this object will have a render method. Let's just type render, and then we'll, we'll, yeah, we'll make it an uh, arrow function uh, that just console logs the current value count. Um, yeah, we can do that. Okay. Um, we're also going to expose another method, uh, uh, a click method. It's, uh, it's another function as well. And then it's just going to set count to count plus one. So that's simulating a button, right? All right. So, so that's, that's all fine. So we have a, something like a component down in here. Um, so we, the last thing that we need to do is that we need to teach our clone of React how to render this function, this, this component function. So we need to write a render function inside of React. This is all unrehearsed. She's doing an amazing job. Um, so it takes a render function takes a component, right? A component is, after all, just a function. So we'll call that function. Let's just assign it to something called like C or comp or I don't know what, app. Whatever you call it. Uh, assign it to like uh, uh, C. I, I call it C in my code. That C equals component, a com, and then just call it. Right? So the component is just a function. We, we're calling it, and now we have a, the, the return object right, of, of what we just wrote. So now we have the object. Let's call C.render. Right? That's just for rendering and, and doing the console log stuff. And then we'll just return C so we can do other stuff with it. OK. Cool. Now, now, we're, now we're ready to actually just rewrite the usage code at the bottom. Um, I, did we delete it already? Yeah, we did. OK, so let's just go to the, all the way to the bottom. right? And now we'll, now we'll actually use what we just wrote. We'll write react.render component. OK, so we'll, some, we'll see something showing up on the screen. Um, react.render is not a function, so we need to, we need to expose uh, render on that, on that object. Cool. Uh, so we start to see the getter on the screen. Um, Let's, uh, let's carry on. So um, let's, let's assign the result of react.render into, into a variable. I, I use var app. So I, I, won't, I won't use var because I, I, I reassign it. Um, so var app equals react.render. All right. And now we can say app.click. Right? And, and now we're, calling, we're just calling this set count function. And then we can var app equals react.render again. So uh, this one is, uh, I think it's alt shift down to, to copy a, a line of code. So go up to, the, go up to that line, alt shift down, alt shift down. Yay, that's a, that's a new, that's a handy uh, keyboard shortcut if you didn't know it. So ha let's have a render before the click, and then we'll click, and then we'll render after the click. Right? Oh, oh come on. <laughs> no, 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 move, move it up, move it up again. I'm sorry, I shouldn't be yelling at you. <laughs> move it up. Yep, there you go. Okay. So, so you don't have to call render. Don't have to call render, because react.render already calls render. Okay, so, so that's roughly this, the thing, except we're, only, we're still showing the state getter function here. So let's refactor that, right? We don't want to show state getter function, so let's go all the way up. Um, we're going to promote the, the scope of val, underscore val over there, um, promote it up to the React scope, the React module scope. Let's, let's uh, cut and paste it up there. Yep. Okay. So initial val, it, let's just let it be undefined. Let's, so let's, let's delete initial val there. Um, and then instead of, and, and for state, uh, is now we, instead of the getter function, right, we're just going to assign it underscore val or initial val. 
right? So, so if there's something in there, use that. If not, use initial val. Um, and so now you can see something interesting. We've got back to our stateful function. And over, over, if you scroll down all the way to the bottom, we're just rendering, clicking, and re-rendering. And if you just uh, spam it out a few times, you use the Alt-Shift-Down thing and with, the, with the clicking. <laughs> you, can see the, you can see the statefulness of the, of the function. Uh, OK, I, I should have shown you the keyboard shortcuts first. <laughs> okay, but you can see that numbers are updating here as, as you click and re-render. And it kind of sort of looks like React, right? Which is pretty interesting. Um, until you try to use a second hook. Um, so let's try, let's try to use a second hook. Um, let's just call it text and set text. Do you know where to put it, the, the second hook? Yeah. So we call it text and set text. Uh, we'll put something like uh, React SG as like the, the initial text, or Shopee or React SG or whatever. OK, React SG. I try to customize it you know, to like, uh, make it interesting and live and all that. Uh, let's, let's, put, let's put that text in the, in the console log for the render. The text variable that you, that you did. You know the console? Yeah. The render method? Yep. OK. All right, cool. Um, and, then for, and then we'll expose a new method called type in, uh, alongside a click. Uh, well, it takes a word, it takes a word, a uh, word variable, okay? And then it sets text to that word. All right, so now let's, let's change one of our app.clicks into a, uh, a type, app.type, and then we'll put in a new word, like view. <laughs> I don't know. Okay, so, uh, so let's, uh, let's delete the rest, delete the rest of the renders. Um, and then we can start analyzing this code. All right. Uh, so I'm going to have you. I'm going to. Um, okay. I'm going to have you consolidate these things. So console, the console logs here. Can, can we combine them into one object? Uh, you know what I mean? Like yeah. Make make it into object syntax. Exactly. Uh, it's easier to see side by side. So you, so you can see individual renders. Okay. So so what what's happening here? Let's put a last render at the bottom as well. Uh, just clone that. Alt shift down. Uh, put one more app dot render. Yeah. At the bottom. Come on. Yeah, no pressure. <laughs> okay, she's got it. Um, so what's happening here is we're trying to set, we're trying to click, right? Click should move the counter from one to two, but it also starts to starts affecting the text uh, state over here. And we try when we try to set the text state, it it's supposed to only update the text state, but it also affects the counter. So we don't have independently moving states. That's a problem for us. Why is why do we have that? And the answer is all the way up there, uh, scrolling up all the way. We only have one internal value, and we keep overriding that every single time. So we need to make room for that. Like we, we need to scale that to multiple hooks. So let's turn that into a hooks array, right? <coughs> Underscore val. Oh, no, yeah. Well, we'll just call it hooks, let hooks equals uh, empty array. And in, instead of uh, just an individual value, we need, now need an index. So we'll just say like let index equals zero as well. So that's the current index of the hook that we're currently operating on. So we'll just replace all the current references of underscore val to hooks uh, index into that. And then the second, yeah, yeah, you're, you're doing great. And then the, that's, the, that's the only other occurrence of that. So what, we, what we're doing is just we're replacing any references to internal value to uh, parameterize it by hooks index. Um, so now we fix something. Look, look, look. The, the, the state, actually, we haven't fixed anything. <laughs> <laughs> and the reason is because we need to bump the index every time we're done with a hook so that the next hook can use the, the second slot and the third slot and the fourth slot. So let's bump it. Oh, yeah, okay, she's already ahead of me. So count is now updating to two, and text is not changing. Good. Um, but then over here, um, something weird is happening. We're, we're, we're updating text to count, and then this is, this is not changing as well. So something's going wrong. We need to reset the, the index to zero every single time we render. Because we need to go 0, 1, 2, 4, 3, 4, and then back to 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, right? So we need to reset every time at the start of a render. Uh, at the end, also works, but let's just uh, do it at the start. Um, and now we've completely broken everything because of very subtle nuance because of closure and uh, stale, uh, basically like stale closure. So over here in the, uh, in, the, in the set state, this is called asynchronously. And whatever this index value is, is going to be live and the latest value. So, and that's going to be true for any set state that's being called in here. So we need to freeze the value of index. Um, we're going to freeze the value um, in, that, in, the, in, a, in a scope of use state. Do you know where to freeze it? Just freeze it in here. Just insert a line in between. Insert a line. Yeah. So, yeah. No, nope, one more here. Yeah. yeah. So we'll freeze the value to like just uh, underscore index. Yeah. Equals IDX. 
And that's at the, t at the point that is, that is being called, at the point that, that use state is being called. So we just have, a, we make sure that we have the matching uh, use state. So let's assign it uh, to a let, use a let or a const, doesn't matter. Okay. Um, and, then, and then let's change the, in, the, the one that we're using down inside set state to an underscore index. Okay, cool. So now we have, we click, the count is updating from one to two, text is not changing. We type a new text, count is not changing, and text is updating. That's great. Um, yeah, so, so I mean, that's, that's a very basic uh, set, set state hooks clone, and uh, Wei's, Wei's done a fantastic job. I want to have a round of applause for her. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm going to take over. Um, but we're not done. I, I just wanted to like, not have her hold the mic for me for the whole thing. But I, I, um, I just want to keep going and show the rest of the models. Um, the second, the second hook uh, that, that, that we're all very interested in is the use effect hook. Um, and the, the API kind of looks like this. So it's react.use effect. It takes a callback, right? And then we'll say callback something like, uh, thank you for the pizza. Um, and, then, and then it takes an optional um, dependency array, right? That's, that's, the, that's the use effect hook. Um, I'm really leaning on the fact that this is a React meetup, so I, I assume that most of you have, have heard of hooks in some shape or form. Um, so, so now uh, it's throwing an error, so we're going to go and implement it. This is actually the hardest part of the talk, and I didn't want to force Wei to go through it. Uh, so we're just going to implement a use effect uh, function, right? So um, it takes a callback and a dependency array. Um, and, and basically, what we want to do is call the callback, right? Every single time that uh, every, every single time we render, by default, we just call the callback of use effect, which uh, executes stuff asynchronously in, in the hooks world. Um, we also want to detect change in uh, the dependency array, so we'll just assume that uh, the dependency array has always uh, is always changing. So I'm just going to say by default that has changed equals true, for example. Uh, and then I'm going to uh, guard that by putting an if in front of the callback. So if it has changed, if the dependency arrays have changed, then you call the callback. So then the only thing tricky is to detect change between two arrays of, of items, uh, always the same size. That means we need to compare the old dependency array and the new, and the new dependency array and see the differences. So, where's a, so we need, that means we need a place to store them in between renders. Where's a good place to store them? It's the hooks array, right? Um, so that's a very nice place to store them as well. Um, and we're also going to, uh, so, so, so at the start of a, uh, of a render as well, then we need to pull it off, and we'll just call it const uh, like old dependencies. Um, and we'll pull it off of there. So that, that could be undefined, so we'll, we'll have to say if uh, old dependencies. Um, then we'll do some magic, <laughs> and then we'll, 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 try to see, we'll try to see if the change has, has, uh, has, um, has actually uh, been executed between, again, we're comparing arrays, right? So we have to kind of zip between them. Okay, so, so this is the hardest part of the talk. Basically, I have to modify this uh, according to um, line by line, just comparing the indexes of uh, arrays. Um, so I'm going to use array.sum. Uh, some of you may not be that familiar with this. It's kind of lesser use. Uh, but basically, it goes through and, and looks at uh, individual uh, list items. Um, and if, if any of them is true, then the whole thing is true. Uh, so, so here I'm going to compare them with, uh, oh, and here I'm going to use um, object.is instead of uh, triple equals. So uh, for those of you who don't know, nan, triple equals nan. That is false, correct? Whoever said that. Uh, and object.is nan uh, and nan. That is true. Um, so this is slightly better in case any of your dependencies ever become nan, which, which never happens, but whatever. Um, <laughs> that's, that's, just, that's just what it, React uses internally because of this reason and because JavaScript is weird. Um, so we'll, we'll index, uh, we'll, we'll, so we'll say object.is um, old depths, ah, correct. The, the current depths and the old depths indexed by that index as well. Uh, and then we'll, say, we'll have a not in there. Um, because that's the logic of that. Um, so let's, let's take that use effect, and then we'll, um, we'll expose it on the React object over here. Um, and now we can see something. Um, so when I, have a, when I have an empty dependency array in my, in my use effect, the effect only runs at the beginning. When I have, uh, when I have a count in my use effect, um, it runs when the count changes from one to two and nowhere else. Uh, when I have, uh, when I when I start to subscribe to the text changes, it, uh, the use effect only runs when the text changes and not when the count changes. And when I and I remove it and I have undefined as my dependency array, it just runs every single time. So that's a that's a good implementation and intuition of what uh, the use effect hook does. 
Uh, you can do a lot of you can do a lot of extra stuff with this uh, with this idea, but you can also start to see why we have the rules of hooks, right? The rules of hooks uh, state state that you can you cannot put them inside a condition like math.random, uh, you know, and then like uh, less than zero point five. Whatever, and then put this hook inside there. What is the index of the second hook after this, right? The index is sometimes zero, sometimes one. Um, it's unpredictable, and it, you start to get out of out of kilter. So, so that's why we have linters to prevent uh, you from doing uh, that kind of stuff. And if you think about the rest of the rules of hooks, they actually basically derive uh, from that. Um, you can also do this is special. I didn't do this at JSConf, but you can also do other forms of uh, hooks as well. I'm going to do React use ref. Um, so. Let's just have a ref equals uh, react dot use ref uh, one. You can you can store whatever you want in refs now. Um, previously, you only stored DOM elements, but you can store whatever you want in refs now. And the way that you use refs, for example, is in for example like this ref dot current, right? Um, and and then you set ref dot current in in some in some in something where uh, you don't want it to store it. You don't want to store it on state. Um, so the way the way that you implement react dot use ref is a one liner in React. Um, it's literally use ref uh, uh, value uh, call, uh, return use state val um, it, and it's an object current val and then index to zero because you never set state for for ref um, so that's that's react use ref if I bother to also expose it down in here. Um, and you can go through the same exercise for um, use reducer. Uh, and it takes a little, little more effort for uh, use context as well. OK, so, um, so all, this is, all this is well and good. Um, I think that we're all here to put stuff on screen. Um, and I, haven't, I don't think this is very convincing as a React clone. So let's just take it the final mile. Um, and we'll just, show, we'll just show stuff in the browser. So um, even though this looks like a REPL, this actually has been in the browser console all this while. Um, and we're just going to start showing the, the browser. <coughs> And to prove to you that this is the browser, I'm going to import some pre-prepared CSS. Um, so I'm going to styles.css, style, styles. OK, and there's a nice animated background to show you that we're actually rendering the DOM here. Um, we're also going to import uh, some other fun stuff that I've prepared as well. Uh, basically, two functions, create element uh, and render from my utils uh, folder. So create element uh, is the basic create element of any JSX uh, and, and React uh, functionality. So we're just going to put that uh, down inside my React module, just re-export it inside of React. And now I can say something silly like, um, I don't know, like react.create element h1 null hello world, right? Um, Unfortunately, that's not showing up on screen yet because I need to teach my render method how to render this kind of new component. Um, so let's, uh, let's, let's, let's use my new render method. Let's delete my old render method, which is just a stupid, simple four-line thing. Thanks for that, though. Um, and it's a higher-order component that memoizes on hooks. Um, you, can see, you can definitely see the code in, in this, uh, after this talk. Uh, and we'll, get, we'll finally get rid of uh, this, this, um, this series of imperative steps here. And we'll just declaratively say uh, what we always say, which is root element, get element by ID, and then react.render or something, right? Um, so let's try and see. Hey, <laughs> that's pretty cool, right? So, so we have uh, react.create element, and we're creating this like, little thing. Uh, so for everyone who knows JSX, what does this become? <laughs> it's, it's just an h1 tag, right? Um, hello, world. I have, Babel, uh, I have the Babel plugin installed here, so, um, and I don't have hot reloading figured out, so I'm just going to manually reload every single time. OK, so, so let's, let's do the final step, which is um, turn this into a fully working app, and then we'll, we'll talk about what we're supposed to take away from all this. Uh, I'm going to use the main, because that's what my CSS um, expects me to use. <laughs> um, and then I'm going to use, um, <coughs> I don't have syntax highlighting in my JSX, which is very funny. Um, I'm going to use the button, and it's, it's going to have a click me uh, function. So, um, uh, set count count plus one, um, and then it's going to say click me count, and it's going to close the button. Um, so that should show a nice little button here, um, and it and I should it should update when I click, but it doesn't update. And why is that? Because we used to manually re-render every single time. We're not we haven't simulated that re-render every time. Uh, in, in React, this is called. A, this has the concept of a work loop. Uh, it just checks. It just uh, cycles every uh, idle callback, and it and it checks for work to be done. 
Uh, we're going to simulate this with, with our own work loop. I can definitely write that in a few lines. Um, it's just a recursive function. Uh, it sets the index to zero because that's what you do every time you, you re-render. Um, it calls the render function. Here, um, again, you don't know this, but this is the new API for, for the render function that I imported up there. Um, and lastly, it's going to set timeout for the next, uh, the next loop. So work loop, uh, I'm gonna, uh, I tested it out for hot reloading and stuff, uh, and it's 300 milliseconds every work loop. And then I'm gonna initialize that. So, uh, so that's the work loop, uh, and now when I click, it actually updates. Which is pretty cool, right? Um, we just live coded all, like, you know, this entire thing uh, without actually using React, but it kinda looks like React. Um, and now just, to, just the final clicker, uh, which is that with this mental model, I haven't done any, anything specific to custom hooks. Um, but it already builds that in, in terms of the design. I can cut, I can just paste in this pre-prepared custom hook, or I can import it in from whatever. Um, this is a fetch dogs uh, custom hook. It just pings an API, it, it, it has a state, uh, which is an array. It pings an API, and it gets, that, gets a, an array of uh, dog images uh, based on the counts variable that we feed in, like one dog, two dog, three dogs. Um, and, then, and then it returns uh, those, that array of, uh, of URLs. So I can, I can use that inside of my, my, um, my component in here. Um, so const list equals use dogs, and then we'll just pass in the counts as well. And now we can actually use list. Uh, this is going nuts, don't worry about it. <laughs> List.map, item, um, image, source. You see, this is, this, we're all about sh uh, getting things to show up on screen, which is why I have to do this. I have to, I have to show you dogs. I have to show you that when I click, it updates, and it looks like a fully functioning app. Right? This is pretty cool, right? Um, I, 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 was, I was pretty happy. Thank you. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so, so this is like a, big, a bit of a party trick, right? Like, like okay, I did, I like cheated, I prepped a lot, right? But look at the API. Look at, look at, this is a function component. It uses state. It uses custom hooks. It uses JSX. It really doesn't take that much work. Right? Um, I, I even like, you know, use custom hooks and, and, and do like data fetching like you're supposed to in hooks land. That's pretty, that, I mean, this is exactly the API. So, um, so why again do we download 30 kilobytes of React every single time? Hmm, that's interesting. So that's the, that's the, that's the homework that, we, that I want to leave everyone behind with, um, is that, uh, you know, this is not React. Uh, this, is, this is the surface level stuff that we use all the time. Um, this, is what we, this is what we talk about. This is why we say we choose one thing over the other thing. No, no. Like there's, please look at the underlying levels of React. Look at why you really, uh, you, know, you know, what parts of the React you, you really don't spend that much time on. Um, I have some answers. I, mean, I can talk to you after the break with, uh, with some answers. Um, but yeah, thank you so much, and thank you, Wei. <laughs> Thanks so much. <laughs> okay, you have to shake your hand. Hey, can we take a photo together? Oh, oh, uh, oh, oh, okay. You can harvest it. Hey. <laughs> does it? Does that? Yeah. It's all about the dogs. Okay. Thank you. Oh yeah. Um, do we have time? Do we have time for, yeah. Does anyone have questions? Sorry. Yeah. Uh, no, um, no, no, those are, those, global store is a separate thing. That's, um, you can have multiple contexts to uh, replace that part of Redux. <coughs> but if you only use Redux for that, then you're not really using Redux as it was intended, which is to chain a bunch of uh, middleware to, to help you develop and um, audit your, your, your app. Um, so, uh, I, no, React records do not replace Redux. In fact, Redux uh, just introduced some new React hooks in uh, Redux, React Redux 7.1. Um, I've actually used them, and they're, they're, they're very good. They're much improved uh, API over normal Redux. Okay. Yeah, and, and I, like the whole point of this is that you can definitely go home and clone this. Um, this is uh, on my site. This is on my Twitter. Um, it's not that many lines of code. Uh, you, you can take the code sandbox, um, but try it and, and practice closures, practice uh, vanilla JS, and, and what your core understanding of React is. All right, thank you. Thank you. All right, uh, that's all for today, folks. Um, we have other meetups in the future. We have one in uh, July, one in August.
So if you're interested in sharing something with the community, 